I'm so excited to interview Paula Kaverick. And um, she's here with me. You can see her. Her studio is in the background. I have a whole bunch of questions for her. And I have her book, which is amazing. And if you ha don't have it, you should get it. It's called At Play in the Garden of Stitch, Thoughts That Come While Eyeing the Needle. And it is really terrific with great examples. Um, OK, so hi, Paula. Hi. Hi, nice to be here. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, right. Yes, absolutely. So um, I should say who I am. I'm Ariane Zerscher, and this is going to be posted on my YouTube channel, On the Other Hand. And so, Paula, how did you begin? Begin the quilting or begin? With, well, yeah. I mean, I wanted to ask the second question was going to be, how did the graphic design influence but yeah you know at, trained as a graphic designer it has, has been a really wonderful thing for me i've been a, a designer for about uh 40 years now um and um that training uh really in, informs my artwork as well so I can, the, the most important thing when I was a graphic designer was to communicate somebody else's messages by uh, providing graphics and design work in their brochures or their website or whatever it was. And um, so I was uh, an avid listener and now I am my own client. And so I can uh, listen to my inner thoughts and, and talk about things with my, <laughs> I'm talking with myself, which is actually, I think a lot of people during the COVID year talk to themselves. Um, but uh, now I'm listening to myself and actually uh, trying to communicate what I feel and what I think through my artwork. So would you say, so do you feel that your art has changed considerably since COVID began? Have you listened more or differently? Um, you know, I've gone through stages. At the you know, I, my, my artwork is uh, kind of eclectic. I try all different things. I'm inspired by everything around me. I might be inspired by a book I read, or the or a nature walk, or something my my grandson said, or something. You know, so. I am, and I use the technique that is most appropriate to that idea. So I might piece a lot of work or I might just go stitching on some canvas um, or I might throw paint on a canvas and then stitch over it. Um, so a lot of different things inspire me and I use the two, because I love fabric and depth and texture, I use that um, those mediums to communicate in. My work has changed over the years. I think when I first was uh, a full-time artist as, as opposed to a designer, a lot of my work was um, very, uh, it was inspired by a specific ideas, um, you know, communicating a, a specific topic or, or something I had read or something that I was inspired by. And um, now I'm much more abstract. So I'm, I'm sort of moving towards an abstract um, composition these days. So how did you come upon the methods that you use now with quilting specifically? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty fearless. Uh, so uh, experimentation is something that I, f I find great joy in. And um, I'm never really focused on a final piece. I, I want to just play. And so the techniques are a matter of, I mean, I spend, <laughs> I spend six to eight hours a day doing this. So um, the, my facility with the tools is much more, um, I'm, it's much more easy for me. So I can actually experiment wildly um, and not have to fight my tools because I've practiced so much. So now it's a matter of now, how do I use that expertise to um, manipulate the fabric in new ways? Um, I've been, I'm experimenting with 3D forms and, and different weights of batting and, and thicknesses. Um, 
you know, throwing paint on canvas, lots of different things. So um, it's just, I'm at play. <laughs> so did you quilt ever before like uh, no uh, my quilt? you know uh, about uh 15 years ago my mother tr started quilting she was in her 80s and just decided to try it one day and she called me up and said you know I think you might like this because it is sort of like graphic design and I was really um I, I was skeptical and though I knew how to sew, I really didn't, I wasn't attracted to quilting as a, as a medium in any way. But when I started trying it, um, uh, I realized that I could use this medium in a new way. Um, you know, I couldn't do the, the uh, traditional quilting. It, you will never find me doing a square over and over again to put it together into a into a blanket. But I do love the quilting tr tradition and so many um, historical um, samples of work show, you know, the variety of the techniques that are available to us as stitchers. Um, and it's a great meditative process. Um, it, it slows me down, which is something that I've always looked for, something to slow me down. So, so you never, so you didn't ever do a quilt and your mother sort of threw this idea and you thought, okay, so what was the first thing you did? Uh, a really horrible um, sampler quilt. And um, I went to one of those, you know, the quilt shop in my, in my town here and took one of those how to do a Dresden plate, how to do a, a, how to do flying geese, how to do a log cabin block, those kinds of things. So it was a sampler quilt over the period of six weeks, I think it was. And, um, and I hated it. <laughs> and it seemed like such a waste of time and I just couldn't get to it. And uh, th then a friend of mine in introduced me to um, the Paducah Quilt Museum. And I went there um, and uh, I, I was blown away. Uh, you know, I, the, those, those quilts uh, inspired me to say, okay, I don't have to do Dresden plates and I don't have to repeat a pattern and I don't have to stitch in the ditch. Um, and that freed me to experiment it some more. And I really didn't get a chance to do it until I was still working. Um, and I didn't really get a chance to really focus on it until about six years ago. When you, did you retire? At that yeah, point? I retired from my business, yeah. And so, all right, because there's quilting and then there's free motion quilting. Yeah. So some people do lots of piecing or applique or whatever, and then they send it off. So, yeah, sure. So, so then what, so tell me about the free motion part, because I mean. Uh, well, you know, I was so intimidated by free motion quilting because I, you know, so many of the tutorials that I found online were about making very elaborate patterns and, and kind of scoping out the, 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 uh, the quilt to, you know, embellish with stitch and, and also to do it exactly, to, to do it with precision. And I am not a precision sewer. I'm, I, um, I like sketching. <laughs> and so th th when I started practicing free motion quilting, again, it was one of those things. I hated it. It was so tight and so um, intimidating and so kind of traditional. It felt like, okay, well, I can do a little vine pattern or I can do floral thing, or I can do feathers or I can do, and I, I really wasn't finding the, that type of stitching as part of my um, vocabulary. And then I, you know, more practice, more freedom, brought me to the way I quilt, which is really, um, it's using free motion stitching, but not in a traditional way. Right, it really isn't. And yeah. I'll, I'm gonna, sh I'll be showing photos as, as you're speaking. Yeah. But um, 
so so how long from the moment you started to sort of play around with free motion how long has it been till now is it is this about six years um no i probably started the free motion practice before that um probably back in maybe 2010 or 11 something like that i st- i had i branched off into you know from piecing to okay i've got a pieced top how do I communicate more with this piece top with my stitching? Because I didn't want to have overall pattern. I really wanted it to be more of a story or more of a dialogue with the quilt. So um, I started experimenting with gestural quilting probably back there in 2010, 2011 and, and making marks that were more appropriate to the way I draw. Um, so, and I, and, and I'm not a great drawer. I, I doodle. So the, my doodles inform the work really. Have you always doodled? Um, yeah, because I can't draw. <laughs> I really don't. I wish I could. I, I, I try, you know, it's a matter of practice. I, I probably could draw if I practice, but I'm not a natural drawer. So my doodles are sort of stream of consciousness. They're kind of um, inspired by something, a pattern I might see, or, or, you know, I'm, I'm very fond of sidewalk cracks um, and, and uh, broken things. So a lot of the things that I draw are, you know, uh, one line drawings that, that are meditative. You're, it's sort of you put the pen on the paper and you don't let go. The fence post is that the yeah. fence post? Yeah. Yeah. So the fence post or the one line drawing uh, exercises like that too. You just start on a corner of your quilt and start stitching and then reacting to that stitch as you come back to it. Was there a, a definitive point when you were playing with the free motion quilting that you s- said, okay, because at a certain point. The, it seems the free motion quilting took sort of over. pushed everything else out. Right? Yeah, yeah, it did. It it took over because it was. I mean, I although I, I still do pieced pieces, um, and now I'm doing collage work with cut up quilts. Um, but yeah, the free motion quilting that signature element of mine is something that people recognize in my work as. Oh, that's a Kavar piece. Um, but, uh, because that's the part that I love doing the most. I, I love the, the, the stitching part of it more than, more than the piecing, more than the layout, more than the planning, more than anything. So, um, a lot of times I'll just take out a, a large piece of fabric, fold it in half, stick some batting in and start stitching. Um, and with not really an aim in mind until the stitching starts telling me where I'm going. So for some of the pieces where you have the, it, it, um, these uh, just absolutely exquisite, these round spherical shapes mm. that are filled with very geometric shapes, which is mm-hmm. so interesting to see the juxtaposition of those two very different lines. Uh-huh. It all works beautifully. Yeah. You start, do you, it sounds like you don't, but I'm going to ask anyway, do you start mm-hmm. with the circle and then fill in, or are you starting here and going out and saying, okay, now I'm going to, um, with, well, with the circular, yeah, with, with the circular stitched pieces, I will usually start with a chalk of the circle outline. Okay. I'll just, uh, you know, it's, it's basically Taylor's chalk and uh, I've got, you know, I use things like hula hoops Mm -hmm. or, you know, I've got a round glass tabletop that sometimes is my, my template or a a piece of string and my chalk, you know, the, the string is anchored in the middle and, and then I go around in a circle just to give myself an outline to go to. And sometimes that's not, I mean, it's not really my goal to put an outline around that circle. It's to imply the circle by going up to it and then coming around back around somewhere else. Um, and to have the journey be um, the, the, str- the line itself instead of the circle. So, 
so I, I'm not gonna, because you do this in the book, in, in the book, um, which I really encourage anyone interested in this to, to, to get, but in it, you list all the various materials that you use. And I was really interested to see that you're using a 40 weight thread, which yeah. is really cool. That, it, yeah, the better to stand up on top of the stitch. <laughs> So I'm assuming you've tried other weights as well. I have. Yeah. I, you know, standard quilting weight for, I mean, most people I think use 50 weight. Um, I don't know about long arm people, but I think most of domestic sewing machine people use 50 weight, which is thinner than 40 weight. 40 weight for me and and that particular brand that I use, the Wild Eye brand um, is it stands up on top of the, uh, of the fabric more. It's more, obvious, which means that the drawing uh, has more more weight to it. You're doing this on a domestic machine. That's fine. Yeah, I use a domestic machine. I use a Bernina. I have a uh, 740. Um, it's, uh, yeah, so I'm doing, I'm moving the fabric through that harp of the machine kind of willy nilly. I'll, you know, it'll, it, it goes all the way to the end sometimes and then comes back to the middle and then around and it depends on what I'm, what I'm inspired by. Um, so that 40 weight, uh, that 40 weight thread requires a heavier needle. It's a 14 or a 16 top stitch needle because the 40 weight thread, um, and you can use a 12 weight needle, but uh, that 40 weight thread does tend, if you're moving quickly, does tend to pull against the needle and can cause it to bend or, or move in uncomfortable directions. Have you tried an even th like a thir 30 weight or I'm sure. Uh, I haven't, I, you know, every so often I'll bring out my 30 weight threads and do some simple stitching with it. I find that it's a little too thick for curves and corners. Mm -hmm. It tends to bulk up too much. So I'm sort of happy in the middle. And then some of your work has hand stitching, which is really yeah. lovely. Mm -hmm. So what kind of, what, what sort of materials are you using when you hand stitch? Uh, oftentimes that's when I'm using the heavier embroidery thread, like 30 weight oh. sewing thread or an embroidery floss. S sometimes just the, th the 40 weight and depends on what I want to do with it. If I'm just kind of creating texture, the 40 weight will do that happily. But if I want to create an uh, actual drawing or a statement with the with the thread, it has to be a little thicker. Okay, last technical question. Yeah. I'm assuming you are not then tying off each thread at the back and then with your needle, or are you? <laughs> I used to. I used to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit more in a hurry these days. Um, you know. It depends. If I'm doing a quilt where I'm, I'm thinking that maybe the back will be as nice as the front, I tie it off. Um, and with certain things, like if I'm, there's a one called uh, round and round it goes, which is on a tablecloth. And there are certain images in that quilt that like, I think there's a, a wolf or something. And if I didn't tie off that thread at the end of his paw, then um, I would have to continue that line so that it would sort of disappear and I'd rather have it stop. Right. Um, so if it's an image that is just an isolated form, I will, I will tie it off at the closing of that form. But I'm also using heavier fabrics these days and I'm also using uh, canvas. And I'm also, I'm sort of getting excited about knots. Um, and, and, you know, what I'll do sometimes is just kind of like stitch, 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 stitch on the same point. So it becomes a dot. That's and awesome. that dot actually adds another p texture, another element, another gestural piece in the, in the, and then that's really easy to just snip and right. it's not gonna go away. Right. That's great. Um, okay, so let's see. So what other materials have you explored? You said canvas, you've used... I'm really loving um, unco untreated canvas. Um, it's got a really nice heavy weight. Um, you can buy it by the yard at art stores. Um, 
I, and I'm using a wool batting with that, or I just, I found some upholstery batting the other day and tried that and it was really thicker, uh, much more dense textural thing going on. So I'm playing with that right now to see what that does. Um, I've used, well, of course I'm, I'm cutting up quilts. So um, past quilts that I'm tired of or pat, quilts that, that no longer speak to me get chopped up and I use those um, as, uh, so I'm stitching over pre-stitched pieces. And oftentimes they'll have different weights you know, or different textures. And I have to sort of play with what the thread does when it goes to a different weight. Um, you're not seaming, you're not putting a, a seam line in, in them, are you? You're no, just sometimes I am. Sometimes I am. I, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll seam them together and then hand stitch the back so it's so solid. But most of the time I'm butting them next to each other and then, and then using a decorative stitch to stitch them together or free motion stitch over them. Um, I'm, ex there's a lot of different ways that you can join pieces, um, but you end up in most of the time with a raw edge at some point there, there, there will be raw edges. Mm -hmm. um, you can take the time to finish those edges or unstitch some of the quilting on that edge and then, and then stitch another piece to it. A lot of people do lap quilts that way where they'll do a, they'll do the batting and the top. <clears throat> and finish a, finish a square, finish a block, and then attach it to a, a second block by stitching that seam after, um, after, you, after you're done quilting each block. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's it, a matter of planning. And I'm not really good at planning. <laughs> so I kind of let it happen as it happens and, and make it work. So one of the things um, that you, in your book, you asked two questions and I wanted to ask them to you, which was, do your childhood dreams match the reality of your life? Oh, no, you know what? I was going to be a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was actually, I, the, my ballerina story is, uh, but I, I took ballet as just avidly took ballet. I was totally engaged in it for years. And um, I had this very um, uh, strong and forceful male teacher um, towards the end of my career as ballet. And I said to him, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a ballerina. And he looked at me sort of down his nose and said, you're too short. Mm -hmm. And it hit me like a lead balloon. And uh, shortly after that, I quit. But <laughs> it's interesting how a teacher can do that. Just one yeah. comment yeah. can shatter a dream. And I was too short. <laughs> I had a similar experience with a piano teacher. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 But, you know, and then you move on. And I, I look exactly. back and I'm grateful that that happened. because Oh, totally. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad I didn't pursue it. Yeah. And really, I think I always thought I would be in some sort of art form, mm -hmm. whether it was dance or, or art itself. So, you know, coming to my college years, um, looking for something that would actually pay my way, I studied graphic design because it was close to art. Um, yeah. And then, you know, once I finally was able to retire, it's a full time career now. Fantastic. And then the second question, which is a follow up to that first, and you probably know it already. Do you, <laughs> ever, do you ever envision your life as you find it now? Did you ever? Um, you know, I, I have this saying, this saying that uh, you create your own reality. And um, I always had a vision of having a studio. And it just took a long, long time to get there. But I'm there now. And I, I really feel like if you put your mind to something over time, it will become a reality. And um, so I, I don't know, I'm, that so, might sound really egotistical, but it's, it's really my, my mother saying, you can be anything you want. And I believed her and I went for it. Um, I have an incredibly supportive and wonderful spouse who 
you know, engages in, I engage in his dreams, I, he engages in my dreams, we work together towards that, and, um, and it works out. So is your studio completely separate from your, where you live, from your home? Uh, it's in the backyard. Yeah, oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so perfectionism. Uh oh. Are you, are you, would you say you are a perfectionist or would you, or uh, so tell me about that? I want to be. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I certainly do want to be, but I am not. Um, You know, band aids are good sometimes. You have to sort of like, oh, go, you know, I come to a place where where I say, you know, is it worth me cutting this all apart and starting over again or taking out those 1 million stitches I just put in because I don't like them or do I move on from there? And um, that really is, um, I, I just keep moving forward. So a lot of times it's a matter of like, oh, well, if I look at this mess I've just created, how, how does that impact the composition that I really want? And, or how can I make that even messier? So that's the statement, you know, there's, there's a lot of things in errors or so-called errors that bring creativity to the, to the forefront. Um, So I kind of, I, I'm training myself to go with the flow, um, but I always have this dream of like, oh, I know exactly what it looks like, and it's gonna be so easy, and it, and I'll be able to finish it by next week. And no, 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 <laughs> never. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. it doesn't work that way. I I would love to be able to make a traditional quilt, it would perfect, you know match seat, match corners and, and, and feathers and all that stuff. I, I'm, I'm so in love with those quilts, but man, the first time I've, first, second, third, and hundredth time I've tried, it's just not there for me. So. I well, I, I'm the, I'm the same. So, you know, <laughs> <Good. sure laughs> um, so I was wondering if you would be willing to Give us a studio, little studio tour. Well, I would love to. I'm trying to figure out how I do that. I've I've got this other, I've got my my iPad and maybe I can do it through that. Maybe. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, here I am. (laughs) Okay, I was just sitting at that computer and talking to you and the view from that computer is this window over here and you can see i'm kind of a clutter person i like having extra stuff around that will inspire me here's the uh, globe that i finished a little while ago it's hanging and it can Turn it around. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. Mm-mm. I love These that. Are- I'm not. I'm not talking because the minute I talk, it's going to speaker view, and I can't figure out how to just spotlight you. <laughs> okay, Let's that's see fine. If I can do it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Court, so these are some of the canvas pieces that I'm experimenting with. They're just wild and crazy. That um, that really heavy black line there is ink that I. Sp- sort of through on the canvas. And then I tried spattering with uh, dye and ink. Here's a 3D piece that I'm working on. And these are all just pieces of uh, old quilts that I didn't want to have around anymore. You can see they all have stitching, but then they're stitched together to create this morphing figure. Here's another one like that, except for it's not morphing. And then the back here is all supply focused. And 
This is a new piece that I'm thinking about working on. I actually drew these in my Illustrator program and then had Spoonflower print them. And I'm going to be cutting them up into squares and reassembling them into a series of portraits, I think, or animals or something, I don't know. Depends on what they turn out to be. And then my outside garden. I don't know if you can see that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's the sewing station. And I am a true believer in bulletin boards. Bulletin boards are my friend because I have a problem with remembering things. And so I, if I find something that inspires me, I use it and throw it up on the board. So I won't forget what it was that inspired me that day. And this board changes all the time. And here's another piece I'm working on. These are also, again, uh, cut up quilts. And the studio itself is connected to the outside um, by a little room in the front that is my staging area. And that's about it. Absolutely <laughs> fabulous. Oh my gosh. I just, <laughs> that was just such a, that was such a treat. Thank you so much for Here. showing. i just blown away. How, so how big is, I have Studio Envy. How big is it? Studio? Um, I, I think it's uh, 15 by 40. Maybe it's it's pretty huge, yeah. Um, and the ceilings are uh, probably twelve feet tall. Um, this you used to be. It was actually built by a photographer that used um, used the studio for product shots. So um, when we bought this property, we added the windows and doors. Um, and created my studio out of his photography studio. Oh, great. So it's been really a wonderful place to be. It's hard to, I, I spend so much time in here that I warned my husband that if I had a cot, I would never leave. <laughs> so um, it's just one of those uh, really happy places for me. When you made your globe. Yeah. I remember you posted, I think on Instagram, a photograph of yourself sitting with your head inside yes. the globe. But, but I remember that there were some issues you were having with the globe, but I can't remember quite what, what those yeah, issues Yeah, it, it, it tends to deflate. Um, let me see if I can I'll put, turn it back around. So you see this area here, it's sort of inverted. Mm -hmm. It's hard to keep the globe in a perfect round shape. Um, but the, the hole underneath this, this hole, it was intended to be um, big enough for my head to go in it. And um, inside there's a ribbon that goes all the way around that says, calm down, mm. calm down, calm down. Um, which, uh, so I've called this piece, my isolation chamber. Um, it's a way to completely shut out everything around. And my hope at one point was to make a lot of those globes, but boy, it, it takes a lot of work. <laughs> it looks and, like it. And, and it, 
and and so when when you're inside, does it is it does it feel quite meditative? It's very quiet. Um, it muffles sound and med- and it's there's a sort of a lacy. Um, it's it's the there's an ivory lace that covers the interior surface so that it's really kind of calm and quiet and beautiful. And then the the ribbon sort of goes around in a nice horizontal horizon. And um, so, yeah, it actually works as a quiet down place. And right now it's hanging a little higher than I usually have it. I ha- usually I have it hanging in the middle of the room right so I could wheel my chair over to it and put my head in but um I love that how often do you use it (laughs) well it just came back from an an exhibition so I haven't been using it for a while um but I use it gosh at least once a day you know you got to quiet down sometimes you know it's a great it's such a great interactive piece I mean it the idea of doing a bunch of these in different various sizes, you know, yeah. to accommodate, I, you know. You I know. I know. I really want to do it. I, I really want to do a whole gallery film, but um, it's just a matter of finding the enough raw material and time to do it. Right. Amazing. Just yeah. fantastic. I love it. And what's next? <laughs> it looks like um, it's been... the no to the left of it. Oh, this. My left. Yeah. Yeah. This kind of string, right? Oh yeah, this is a. These are my trimmings. I've been, I've been uh, cutting up quilts, and there are little edges that don't get used. So I started putting them together into this long string. It's fabulous. It's got some great character, I think. I, I'm, yeah. re- I'm really liking it. I think I might just keep doing this and end up with a whole room full of them. Oh yeah, it's really, really interesting, especially yeah. with the globe next to it. It's been- yeah, yeah. It's not. I love the texture. I love the texture. Kind of, you know, f- fun, playful things that I love to do. Those those tubes in the background there, mm-hmm. the the long tubes. I I spent back when COVID really did us bad. We were re- total isolation. I could not get myself to work properly and. So at one point I took out all the colors that I had and started cutting them into one inch strips Mm -hmm. and sewing them together with the idea that I could do a strip quilt. And you know, that perfectionist thing that we talked about earlier, Right. (laughs) the strip quilt didn't work. So (laughs) So I ended up just wrapping them around those tubes that I use for shipping and I had so much fun with that. I don't know what I'm ever going to do with those tubes, but I just love that they're here. You know, it's kind of another playful thing to think about. You know, I kind of want to hang them in in a mobile form from the ceiling. Oh, yeah. There are totems, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very, really fun. Yeah. Very, very cool. (laughs) So now I, I collect tubes. I collect... Um, cardboard tubes, you know, toilet paper rolls and oh, <laughs> that's great. I love it. Yeah. So where where are you scheduled to? I know you you teach or have taught quite a bit. And yes. Are, are you scheduled to um to teach? I am. Um I'll be teaching um in September. I'm teaching in San Diego. Um, I think, it, you know, all the classes that are near to us now, I mean, in terms of um, timing, they're all booked. I'm, I don't think there's an opening. There might be an opening in the San Diego class. It's through the Visions Art Museum. Um, and then I teach in Aramont in September, which is an arts and crafts school. Where and, is it in California? Where is it? Uh, it's in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Okay. And um, let's see, I, I think I'm teaching, I'm teaching in Georgia in January, I think. Um, so yeah, a, a lot of the teaching gigs that I had sort of dried up during COVID, um, but they're coming back around now. And I just love teaching. It's, it's just, I love being with people who are as passionate about this art form as I am. And 
we have so much fun. I mean, you know, those exercises in that book you know, are just the start of the fun. And, um, you know, I try to make people and not make them, but encourage them to let go of the fear of free motion quilting and just, you know, just let it go and, um, and be happy with um, just the process of it. For me, it's, it's, um, it's a meditation. It's, it's really, you know, it brings the inner out. Beginners are always welcome because they don't have preconceived ideas. Um, and they, uh, you know, I say, you know, if your stitching is wobbly, make it more wobbly. You know, if, if you don't like how it's happening, do, going, just let it, just let it keep going. It, it eventually it smooths out. It's really, you know, everything takes time. So, but I, I've had some incredible results with beginners, people who had never stitched before or free motion stitch before, you know, doing great work, um, you know, and being inspired by it. So that's the, you know, what a gift for a teacher. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Paula, thank you so much for, for agreeing to, to speak and to- oh, It's such a pleasure to work. talk to you, Arian. I, you know, I'd love to ask you a hundred questions. <laughs> I, I know you have an art practice uh, and, uh, I, and I've, I've seen your website and I think you've, you're really doing some really great stuff. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been, it, I just love the, um, um, the similarities I find in, uh, you know, th so many, I think, who are working in this way would follow the process, you know, it's, it's the yes. process, it's not the end result. It's exactly, um, I often talk about when what, hand stitching, you know, is the thread having a dialogue with this other part that, or are they fighting, you know, if they're fighting, exactly, interesting, but yeah, but, yeah, and it's all it's similar ways of thinking it's true and I, I you know we are in this this kind of uh, niche that um a lot of women in in later years of their lives are are doing some exquisite and groundbreaking work with this art form that just blows me away i mean I, there's just so much out there in fiber art and um i think one day they'll start recognizing all of us and say, you know, this is a valid form of, of um, incredible uh, artwork. And so yeah. it's, it's exciting. It, I, I really enjoy it. I've, I've been part of the sock book group for a number of years and they are doing a really great job of, of um, promoting the art quilt. So Paula, thank you so much for spending this time with, with us. And I just love your work. And if you have not gotten Paula's book, it is at play in the garden of stitch and it is available. I bought mine on Amazon, but it's, I think, right. Anywhere pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah. You can get it. You can order it from any bookstore. They'll, they'll get it in. And it's really, really fantastic with just some wonderful illustrations and nice detail shots. Um, Thank so you. thanks so much, Paula. And I really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you, Ariane. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.